In this video series, I'm recapping, in dramatic style, every issue of Fire and Stone, a comic series traversing the Prometheus, Alien, and Predator franchises across multiple eras. If you're not caught up, click the card in the upper right corner to check out Chapter 1. Or just keep watching and it'll be easy to follow along. Today's video covers Fire and Stone, Prometheus, Chapter 2. On the distant moon, LV-223, Captain Angela Foster and her crew have just stumbled upon an old ship, one that escaped the destruction of Hadley's Hope 40 years earlier. Inside the vessel, they find hardened black material covering the walls, and their scanners detect life forms. Before a thorough examination of the ship can begin, the grotesque creatures waiting inside reveal themselves. Suddenly, there is a monster above Lucy, which viciously latches onto her. Another crew member tries to announce the hostiles but is interrupted by a parasite bursting through her helmet, hugging her face tightly. Those with weapons fire on the creatures, freeing the acid which courses through their veins. Angela quickly leads her crew out of the ship. Some are wounded by the physical assault, burned by the acid blood, or indisposed by an alien parasite hugging their face. Angela shouts over the radio to the ship waiting for her. We have wounded. Hostiles in pursuit. Some sort of, damn it. She stops her transmission as the creatures, which followed their escape, grow closer. One of them quickly approaches a lagging crew member, but security officer Galgo Helder sprays it with bullets. The man, although freed of the terrifying predator, is caught by one of Galgo's stray bullets. Another member of the team assures him they can yell at Galgo later. For now, they focus on escape. The team gets clear of the monsters and reaches what appears to be a naturally formed bridge over a lake. As they cross, Angela orders Traynor, still on the command ship, to evacuate them. He sends the salvage vehicle, Cadmos, to a landing zone on the other side of the bridge. All they need to do is cross and they'll be home free. Unfortunately, the bridge's integrity is apparently lacking. Loose rock gives way and Steinberg plunges to the waters below. The team above promises to fish him out in a moment, but they quickly learn more monsters lurk in the dark lake. Three others join Steinberg in the hellish waters as more of the bridge collapses. The rest of them fire at the shark-like creatures as Galgo commands, Open fire! Higgins! Piper! Turn the waters! Give those men a chance! After the bloodbath, they collect the wounded and board the ship. Their captain, Angela, gives the team an update. Of the wounded, two are unlikely to make it, and the other two have parasites attached to their faces. She goes on to say that Francis and his construct, Eldon, split off during the attack. She asks for volunteers to go back out, find them, and escort them home. I'm there, Galgo says. Then Angela continues, but first, I think it's time to tell you the truth. What do you mean by that? Galgo asks. Then Angela reveals their true mission. They will be salvaging a deep space research vessel as advertised. However, Angela says, it was headed by Peter Wayland, and it went missing. She goes on to explain that Wayland was trying to find creatures he called engineers. He believed they seeded life on Earth, and actually the whole galaxy, maybe even beyond that. She wants to continue his mission, searching for life's true origins. Angela adds, Now I think that something terrible happened to Whalen's crew, too. Unbeknownst to the team, an engineer watches their ship from a distance. As the team loudly chides Angela for lying to them and putting their fellow crew members at risk, they are interrupted. Captain Foster, sorry to cut in, but we found Francis and Eldon. They're alive. We have them on the wire. They climbed some sort of cliff, found a cave. Over the wire, Francis excitedly tells Angela of his and Eldon's discoveries. Apparently, a man named Derek Russell survived whatever happened on the vessel from Hadley's Hope. He lived on this moon for some time, and although Francis presumes he is now dead, Derek left behind a wealth of information, including notes from his research on the black goo they discovered. Derek calls it an accelerant. Its properties are amazing, universe-changing, Francis says. Derek also left behind a probe which scanned much of the moon. Going through the data, Francis spots what looks like an alien vessel. According to the data, the vessel crashed, spilling the accelerant onto this dead moon. Just over a century later, the bizarre jungle sprouted from it, along with the strange creatures that inhabit it. Unfortunately, Angela and her team will not be able to land anywhere near the small cave where Francis and Eldon await rescue. So they travel on foot, 
watched by monkey-like creatures and an engineer. Back at the command ship Helios, the crew members on guard receive a visitor. Hey, look at that, Clark says. Galgo was right. He said there were ugly monkeys, and that right there, that's an ugly monkey, the other guard adds. You suppose it's... Clark replies with a wordless grunt, as a sharp tail covered in his own blood bursts through his torso from behind. Oh hell, hostiles, get inside, get inside! The crew on board the Helios begin sealing the doors, leaving Clark and the other guard to their fates. Wait, I'm not! She is cut off as one of the creatures viciously sinks its teeth into her left shoulder. The doors on the Helios close. The creatures screech and pound on the doors. At the cave, Francis assures his robot companion that they'll be rescued soon. I am not scared, Francis. It is good to be with you. We are friends, Eldon says. Of course we are, Francis says with a smile. Now we should use this hour on research. Then he reaffirms that the accelerant could change the universe. Eldon warns, it sounds dangerous, Francis. Francis agrees, as Derek Russell's research mentions things like heightened aggression, twisted growth, and horrific deformities. However, Russell also mentioned a way to tone down the mutation and heighten the beneficial aspects. Francis looks at Eldon and considers something aloud. The mixture of this accelerant through something like a construct's engineered blood. The healing properties are without limit. Limbs could be regrown, sight restored, cancer banished. Cancer, Eldon, like mine. As Francis speaks, Eldon's attention seemed to be elsewhere, the maps on the cave walls. He observes that, although there's no seismic activity on the moon, the mountain has been growing. But I'm sorry, Eldon says. I apologize, Francis. You were saying something. Was it important? Looking at the construct before him, the one with engineered blood that may be able to filter the accelerant, Francis says, Eldon, I need to ask you a favor. Meanwhile, Angela and her crew happen upon the crashed alien vessel which Francis found in the drone scans. As Angela spots an open hatch, Galgo protests, shouldn't we be rescuing Francis and Eldon? Wasn't that the point of this little nature walk? Or have you forgotten how to tell the truth about a mission? Shut it, Galgo, Angela responds. I know I screwed up and people were hurt. You think it's not ripping me to shreds? But right now, we've got possibly the greatest salvage opportunity in all of history. Galgo ignores her. Something else has grabbed his attention. I think I found a rifle, Galgo says as he lifts the alien weapon from the floor of the strange vessel. Besides the rifle, they also find containers for the accelerant Francis is currently studying. Accelerant he's about to plunge into his friend's bloodstream. Eldon, stay still, Francis says. I don't like this, Francis, Eldon responds. Francis reassures him. It's just a small amount. Just a test. Don't worry, we're friends. I'll only put in a drop. No more than a drop. Francis empties the syringe into Eldon's arm. The effect is immediate. Black accelerant spreads throughout Eldon's body as he attempts to speak. Francis, it's wrong. Something's wrong. There's a burn. His words are lost in a blood-curdling scream as the black goo spreads to Eldon's brain. And that's where issue two wraps up. Clearly things are really starting to pick up and get pretty terrifying just in time for Halloween. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the issue in the comments. Also, let me know if there are any other comics you'd like to see me cover in a similar way. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon for more videos like this one. It's a huge help to the channel and gets me that much more excited to make the next video. So I sincerely appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.